Introducing the D'Addario Auto Lock, made with locking strap ends for an easy to use clip on system. When you're done, just pull the latch and slide it off. Keep your guitar on lock with the Dario Auto Lock. Well, before we get into the gear, which I know everyone's excited to hear, I want to talk to you briefly about Rigs of Dad and how to get started because it's one of my favorite follows on Instagram. It's kind of the reason I open up the app because a lot of it sometimes is just garbage, to be honest. <laughs> but that is the one that gets me to come back because it just makes me laugh. And it's so relatable to whether it's a story or the image. Man, I'm just curious how it started and how you've been able to carry it on this long. Yeah, so that was, uh, it, it. man, it was like six or seven years ago. Um, I was just out with some friends drinking, and we were just kicking around the idea of we should start a dad band uh, okay. where we're just way more focused on, yeah, the hangs and cracking open a couple cold ones than actually bothering to learn songs or anything like that. Like, yeah, we'll play puddle mud song here or there, but like for the most part, like let's get some beers in the Marshall fridge and let's just hang out. Let's like buy some fresh black denim and uh, you know, not, not even break it in, not break the band in, just break the, break the fridge open. And um, yeah, it just kind of like started as a text thread like that and then turned into a Instagram thing. And it, it just kind of went from there, but uh, I, I think what makes it relatable is, you know, you've probably played shows with with these dudes before. I know I have. Like the the first show I ever played was like for dudes that like either worked at Guitar Center or wanted to work at Guitar Center. You know, yeah. And, uh, it, it was it was an eye opening experience. And you know, if you've worked in an office job, you've had the guy who works downstairs come up and be like you should come to check out my show and it's just we all know those people and they're yeah it's it's not even like within the guitar community it's like that's what's so great about it like you're kind of alluding to there with the office environment where it's like you know that sketchy guy that you know comes in <laughs> twice a week to refill the culligan water coolers and he's telling you about his band that plays from six to ten at the chug suckle so like yeah <laughs> we all know those people <laughs> Yeah. It's just like perfect. Yeah, yeah. They're 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 a special bunch and I genuinely love it. I don't try and knock it. I try and make it more of something that's just a fun and em yeah, I embrace the the dad rock vibe. I I feel like do you ever have any I mean like issue with the gear companies that are featured in it cuz like you know, you do go gear in in the caption that that you write and put with the the photo, you know, you know, a lot of times with sleep parker flies. <laughs> Have any of those gear companies ever like reached out to you and said, hey man, cut us some slack or, or are some people like they lean into it? Uh, some people lean into it. Um, some, yeah, I mean, it, it, like I, I, I think the ones that like get the brunt of it, you know, are not necessarily like, the, I don't think it's because they're bad instruments. It's never been about like, this is a, this is a piece of shit sort of thing. It's more of just like, we all know that this is synonymous with affordable. <laughs> and since most of these dudes are probably p paying tuition somewhere, the yeah. like, they're probably not like, well, I could buy this matchless combo. Um, yeah, my wife will go for that. Or it's more just like, or, or it'll be my ex-wife and I have this matchless combo, but I'd rather have like the, the, um, yeah, the, the crate amp with uh, Epiphone as opposed to the Les Paul Custom uh, Gibson version. <laughs> so <laughs> well, I, 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 don't get, I don't get flack from a lot of the companies. Like, I think a lot of the companies that pop up on there have a you know, awareness, keen awareness to it. Yeah. And then one last thing about Rick's Day Before Pop Up is that uh, the Instagram, I don't know how that worked out, but now you're doing a podcast that started uh, you know, early 2020, I believe, or did it end yeah. 2020, 19? Yeah, I, so uh, right now uh, we are in my, the venue that my wife and I own downtown. Uh, we used to pra the band used to practice at our house. Since COVID hit, we can't practice at our house, uh, and okay. we have not, we're not able to open doors here. So we've just been practicing here. Um, and with you know, when you run a venue and your doors are closed, you're kind of just like, all right, well is this $1,800 going to float me for the entire year? So I was just like, I need to do something else. I need to do something different. Uh, so I, the, the Instagram page has 
gratefully, I'm so grateful for it, opened up so many incredible doors and started some fantastic relationships with people that love to talk gear, uh, love to talk, like tell stories about, you know, being musicians and stuff like that. And that's something that's always fascinated me. I've always been an mm -hmm. avid rig rundown watcher. So, um, you know, without trying to steal your thunder or anyone else's like interview thunder, I was kind of just like, I would love to share some of these stories with people. Uh, yeah, I like the, the weird part of it is years ago, I had, I ran into Henry Rollins at uh, Starbucks at like midnight. It was closed. He was just out front, uh, just writing in a notebook. And I just was kind of like, hey, like, uh, I just have to say, like, take a minute to just say, like, I wouldn't be who I was if it wasn't for you. And thank you. And he sat there and talked to me for like an hour and a half. And wow. I think about that conversation almost every day because it was just so inspiring. And it was one of those things that it's like, I wish I fucking recorded this and I wish I could share this with everyone because it was so enlightening. And this is pretty much the only way I'm able to pay that forward in any capacity. So that's, that's yeah. the long version of why I started the podcast. Henry is such a rad dude. He's an inspiration, not only from like a musician standpoint, a human being, but also like, as like a traveler, like the, the oh, way yeah. he goes about to see the world is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean that, that we talked about that a lot and his, his story is always, you know, what is your story? And that's, that's yeah. kind of where his story starts. And I think that's just such a fascinating outlook on life. And I mean, you, you do enough of these interviews to know that that's, you know, nothing short of inspiring when you hear people talk about their story, talk about their gear, talk about, you know, their identity and everything of the sorts. It's, it, it's awesome. So yeah, I love, I love sharing that stuff. 